You know what? I really enjoyed this episode. I'm getting into it, y'all. What's good, love squad? It's your girl, Kim, a.k.a. at Glam Powered, and I'm back with another edition of Fandom. This is the Fargo Season 4, Episode 3, Recap and Analysis. Feel free to follow me on Instagram, at Glam Powered. So let's get into this analysis. First, we have, dun da 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 people. <laughs> We were introduced to the U.S. Marshal named Dick, what is it, Dick Wickway, I think, a.k.a. Deffy. We already met Ms. Zelmar Roulette and Swanee Cops, but they were like, <laughs> I mean, they've been interested since they came to the series, but they were real interested in this episode. I mean, Bonnie and Bonnie, can I say that? <laughs> right? Um, we had the OCD cop, which I don't know if I knew his name before, but Wef, um, I didn't know, uh, Miss, Miss Roulette's, uh, Elka Rita's mama name. We, we got a sense of her. I mean, she put on a good, put on a good show <laughs> in this episode. So Mr. Braille Roulette, um, and Thurman, Elka Rita's daddy. I didn't know his name either. He is so sweet. I call him the flower child, right? I mean, there was a lot going on. Um, this episode, Thurman was the flower child and the pie holder, okay? <laughs> then we had Lemuel. I think we met Lemuel Cannon before, but he had a, a larger presence in this episode. And I, I mean, he was speaking facts to his daddy, okay? Young men, young men speaking facts to his daddy, the prodigal son, okay? And we had Omi, I call him Glass Eye, y'all know who I'm talking about, <laughs> uh, on the Cannon Squad, okay? Um, I was like... He's he's just interesting, just interesting. Some of these people, like, they don't have to say much, but they are so interesting, and he's one of those characters, okay? Um, so those were the people. Uh, let's get into the context, all right? So we start with the U.S. Marshals retracing their steps of the jailbirds. That's, <laughs> that's going to be Swanee and Zelmar, okay? Um, we pan in on the lead marshal, which we now know as Deffy, right? Um, he's a character. You know when you look at him that he's about to be a character. I'm totally getting Tarantino vibes from this episode, but it started with him. I was like, you know what this reminds me of, okay? Where is Kill Bill? Because we need to kill Bill, okay? We need, <laughs> we need to kill him, okay? Like, for real. I was like, where is he? I was like, if Tarantino was going to make a series, it's going to have to be this season. Because the characters are just quirky in that way. We find out, um, you know, that it's uh, U.S. Marshal Dick Wickware, and he's a Mormon priest. Very interesting. And I, you know, I, I don't know much about Mormons. I did not know that they had kill orders out on them during this time in the state of Missouri. That was interesting. And then the OCD cop is tasked with assisting the, the U.S. Marshal, and we're caught up to the point where they bust down the door um, of the mortuary in the previous episode, right? And like I said, uh, the Braille Roulette, I call her Miss Roulette now, or Mrs. because she's she is married. She put on a very good convincing act that throws the marshal off the scent because, I mean, they knew what they were doing and they were coming. They were coming and she had to protect her baby. So, yes, and her family. And then, you know, the fathers fight. Oh, I'm sorry, they do fight. <laughs> but the father's right hand uh, meets Dr. Senator at a cafe to discuss the cider houses, which were promised to them. And Dr. Senator lets him know that they'll be keeping them, more or less. He, you know how he got to have a story for everything. <laughs> He's like, nah, we, we keeping them. And then we have Nurse Ratchet, who puts on an act and lands herself another job at Dr. Harvest Hospital. I was wondering how her and, what is it, Justo were going to reconnect? Well, now we know, okay? She runs into who else but Justo while he's plotting his revenge, okay? Later on, Cannon is at his place of business, you know, the number situation and whatever else they got going on. And Zamar and Swanee are scoping out that place because they're getting ready to handle theirs, okay? He doing his business, they are doing theirs. Meanwhile, Joseph's brother puts a hit on Candace's oldest son, Lemio, because of the slaughterhouse situation. This, I freaking loved his character. I don't know the actor's name, but I saw a picture of him out of character, and oh my God, he just seems like a fly dude. Like, I was just like, ooh, 
he seems completely different <laughs> in his regular picture from this. I'm like, he's really acting the hell up out of this character, y'all. Y'all don't know. So anyways, that happens, right? <laughs> the The hit has been put out on Lemuel. And then the Irish guy they call Rabbi puts a stop to it because he's trying to see... Um, the crazy Joseph brother, is, well, they both crazy, but the one from Italian, from the one straight off the boat from Italy, he's trying to see um, if the Irish guy is going to be loyal or not, because, you know, he, he's, he's trying to, to flex, if you will, and test the waters. And he puts a stop to it because he, he has been through this. He has been traded. He was traded twice. We, we see that. We see that in episode one, but we get more of the backstory and stuff in this episode. And he's just like, no, nah, like, why are you trying? What are you doing? What are you doing? So he puts a stop to it. Swanee eats that poison pie that, that Nurse, Nurse Ratchet had left on the porch from before. And, um, I mean, they proceeded to rob Cannon's place of business, vomit, flatulence, and all. We know what she put in that pie. <laughs> we already discussed this. So I was I was like, who's going to eat this pie? I, I was waiting. I was waiting. The little comedic element to this show, because if you think about it, this this show this it's not that funny, but they have this element there at the same time, and it works. It just works. It's functional. It works. So then we have, I mean, that that's more or less what happens, right? Um, and then of course, you know, uh, after the hit is put out, um, obviously, Canon is concerned about the the deal that, that that was made and the exchange of the sons and you know whether or not his son is gonna be safe and how they gonna like handle theirs moving forward because all this stuff is happening he got a, a hit on his place of business and somebody put a hit out on his son and they're like trying to put together those puzzle pieces so we end with that right just a, that understandable like you know what are we gonna do next how are we gonna flex back so that's that now let's get into the concepts i have a couple of them here First of all, um, that's to Mrs. Roulette. Helping family when you know they trouble. Ooh, I keep seeing this theme. I'm watching uh, Tehran on um, Apple TV, <laughs> and this theme is being explored there. You you know your sister, niece, auntie, cousin, brother, whoever. You know they trouble, but you help them anyways. Why? Because they family. Yikes. <laughs> I mean, they come busting down the, the mortuary doors and... And going through the, um, going in the, uh, what is that, the morgue, looking at the dead bodies. I mean, it's just a mess. Oh, my God. And really, I mean, this family has enough going on being a, a biracial family. They don't need that extra heat on them. So that was going on. And then the other thing, oh, I hate this. Tell me how y'all feel about this. This makes me feel away. I'm, I'm low-key getting a visual of me scratching my fingernails against the wall. I hate it when people order food they don't eat. We see that all the time in movies and series. Dr. Senator did this at the beginning of the episode when he was talking with the father's right-hand man about the whole Sauter house. He ordered a whole plate of flapjacks. He ate like two plates and put his money on the, on the I mean, he ate like two bites, put his money, his little coins, because back then you can use coins to pay for stuff. You can't do that now. <laughs> He put his coins on the table and walked away for dramatic effect. Wasted all that food. I have, ooh, I take issue with that. I know it's not real, but, ah, oh God, I be hating that. I hate that. Eat your food or take it with you. <laughs> How do y'all feel about food being left behind? Let me know in the comments. And then we have the favorite scene okay my favorite scene definitely i mean the tension was real i had a couple but it was when the marshals in the house and swanee and roulette are pointing a gun at his back right <laughs> like they ready shotgun aimed loaded and ready okay and then again when swanee eats the poison pie because i'm just waiting for her insides to erupt i'm waiting for her insides to become her outsides i was just like oh my god and they had them um stacked up in a hearse because uh what's his name again thurman thurman had to seek them out the house because the, you he knew that they was being watched and she was uh swanee was on top of zelmar and i was just like waiting for her to vomit in her face i was just like oh god this is despicable like <laughs> the tension they built it up all right so um it was a really interesting action-packed episode 
There was a lot going on. Let me know, like, which character is your favorite? There are so many characters, and we have more. We haven't even we haven't even been introduced to all the characters yet. There are more. Which one are you liking? And once again, like, uh, does the food, uh, does the way station of the food bother you? Okay, love squad. That's it for this episode of Fandom. This is the Fargo recap and analysis. Once again, I'm Kim, a.k.a. Glam Powered. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And thank you so much for listening. Bye.